is I get to finally just talk as myself. I don't have to deflect. I don't have to hide what I'm really feeling. And it, it makes me, aside from just getting to be more open and honest, it also just makes me more empathetic to others. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Beep, I Wish I Knew My 20s. As you know, this podcast is hosted by me, a former high school dropout turned national TV correspondent. I had no mentors. I had no big sister. I had nothing, okay? So nobody showed me the way. I want to pour into you to help you not just survive, but thrive in your 20s. And that brings us to today's guest, Nora Reichart. Nora Reichart is a reporter in Des Moines, Iowa. You tell stories every day, sometimes several in a day, but it's your story that is really making headlines. Not just here, not just in Iowa, but across the country. Ever since you came out as a transgender woman, you're one of the only transgender TV reporters in the nation and a GLAAD Media Award nominee. I'm so happy to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here. I just think there's so much to be learned from your story, no matter whether you're transgender, LGBTQ, any, no matter what community you are part of. Uh, if you're part of the human race, we can learn a lot from your story, from your bravery, from your vulnerability, from so many things that you've been through in life. I can imagine that it is nerve wracking, difficult, to come out as transgender, but then to be a known person on TV, that has to add another layer of complexity, no? Oh, ab absolutely. It was a long, a long process of figuring out exactly how to start bridging that gap. But I functionally reached a point where I had started seeking therapy and figuring out, I was in the process of figuring out that I was trans while I was pretty early in my career. I, st I started at my my current employer, uh, WOI Local 5 News. Uh, I started there in July 2021. So just a few months after I graduated from college. And it was a few, a few months after that where being on TV kind of put me in a position of realizing that I didn't totally like the person that was suiting up and going into studio every night. I just felt a real disconnect from the image that I was showing of myself on air. And that was part of what led me to pursue pursue that, finding out who I really am. And in the process of doing so, eventually, I just realized how much happier I was and how much I wanted to get to be me all the time. And I wanted to be me to the viewers as well, because eventually I reached a point where everyone in my life knew Nora and was happy to see Nora and everything was great there, except when I was going into the newsroom and introducing myself on TV. And I didn't want to have to keep using both of the names. I didn't want to have to keep living both of those lives. And I am very grateful that I don't have to do that anymore and that I get to go to work as myself and tell the stories that I get to tell and meet the amazing people that I do. It's an incredible job. And there is the element of seeing yourself on TV. Anyone can attest. You never quite think you you look or sound how you do. It might be a little more fidgety than you're used to. Looking back at some of my old stand-ups, it's, mm. oh, wow, I wish a producer had said something, to be honest. But in any case, I the per, when I was going in, into work at Fresh College grad, I I don't quite look like the the person that's that's doing this interview. My hair was a lot shorter, aside from the fact I also hadn't undergone any hormone replacement therapy at the time, was sporting like a full beard and just going to work each day wearing like the polos and button ups and whatnot, pairs of slacks, some nicer shoes that, you know, in the process of trudging across the state get less nice as you go. But overall, that's just who I was showing up as and who I was presenting to the world every day. And I was telling everybody, this is me. And, you know, one of the fundamental ten tenets of journalism is you always want to be honest, right? Is just tell, tell the truth as you know it. And that didn't feel like the truth that I was telling people. It felt like I was lying to them when I was giving them that name, when I was telling them that this is the person giving you the news. That really wasn't me. This is. And, and getting to lift that veil, I think, has, only, and has made me a better reporter. I think that's one of the reasons why is I feel like there's less of a a wall so to speak between me and the people that i'm i'm meeting in the field or or even just presenting myself to on air it feels a lot more authentic and natural and less 
like I'm trying to build up to being that person that I felt like I was supposed to. There's a lot in your story that can lift up so many people, no matter what their background, no matter how they identify. A lot of people don't feel, I mean, maybe I'm speaking for myself. I don't know. I, but I feel like, because I coach a lot of reporters, many people aren't comfortable with who they are, whether you know it be that they are trans, they're in the wrong, they feel as if they're in the wrong body, or uh, it's just a very visual medium in TV, or they just don't like themselves for a variety of reasons. I, I feel like there's a lot to be learned in your story. And so was there ever a moment that you thought, I don't know if I can start to um, transition? I mean, I got to imagine that on the precipice of that, that may have been a scary decision to make. Oh, absolutely. It is. I think I think any trans person for the most part will tell you th the same thing that al almost all of us will say for the rest of our lives, it's the best thing we ever did for ourselves. And like, that's still true, but that doesn't make it not scary. A lot of really good things in life happen that way. Mm -hmm. And dealing dealing with that fear, what took a lot of time. And especially early on, I was a lot more cautious about who I was slowly starting to invite into the circle. Like, who was the first person I told? And then it was, I want to say, a, a, I went to therapy, or I started pursuing therapy about two two weeks after I first told someone, I think I might be trans. And But from there, I didn't tell another person in like my social life still for, I would say, several months after that. And and just each time it was that that same conversation of, hey, this is something that's going on in my life. I trust you. I want you to know about. And it's still scary every time because you're going to people who obviously know you pretty well in one sense and asking them to look at you a very different way than they have previously. But I'm very fortunate that the people in my life, my friends and my family all, or at least for the most part, have been really, really supportive of me and have wanted to see what this process could be like, wanted to know what they could do to support me through it. And I know that's not something that every transgender person gets, and I consider myself really lucky that I have it. And it's also one of the reasons that I wanted to be a little more forthright and public about this whole process, was I'm getting this amount of support from people, and I want to share the fact that I think my life is good, and that I want people to feel like that is what their life can be as well. What's the best part about being you? Oh, I touched on it a little bit, honestly, earlier, but it really is that I feel like it's the best, the best decision I, I've made for improving my, my personal relationships and just my emotional intimacy with other people, because I get to finally just talk as myself. I don't have to deflect. I don't have to hide what I'm really feeling. And it, it makes me Aside from just getting to be more open and honest, it also just makes me more empathetic to others. I'm more present and by being more in the moment and with happy with myself, I'm able to be a better friend and, and family member for the people around me too. So it's very much a, a two-way street there. And I, I'm very cognizant of that. And I always try to reciprocate that effort with people. I really do appreciate just getting to continue that 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 honesty for for lack of a better term i just i get to know others and myself so much better than i ever did before and i love the connections that i've been able to build since coming out and you can be present for them you know when you're in your head thinking about what if they think this or what do they think that or i need to be this way you're not really present in your relationships and i think this is a really important point for people um empathy man do we need more of that in this world? Like, we need some more empathy. Um, every, you know, we're all just like, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, so, you know, this is a place where people are kind of fighting each other all the time. Congress is down the block, like, you know, two sides going at it. And we just need to know that we're all more similar than we are different. Oh, ab absolutely. And I've been really grateful that that's honestly what the experience has been for the most part for me. Like I really have not had as many publicly negative experiences as I really feared that I was going to at first. Like, yeah, there's been some awkward encounters and there's been some situations that I've had to distance myself from, but my day-to-day -day life, people see me and treat me as 
as Nora and I'm not getting name called or anything like that. And I, again, I'm so lucky to have that, that I, I don't have to have that fear in my life. And I get to, I get to focus on just being me and not, am I safe being me? And so honestly, I appreciate the amount of support that I've gotten just from the, the Des Moines metro community and central Iowa beyond. I've been to almost, well, honestly, just Iowa as a whole. Our, our market is central Iowa, but I've been to almost all four of the state's sides at one point or another. And everywhere I've gone, people have been understanding and accommodating. And I, th I think there's something to be said for just visibility. And so often people don't know if they've met a trans person. So it feels very distant to them. Like, of like, how do I engage with this person? What am I supposed to say? What am I not supposed to say? And I think when, when the nature of the reporting gig is I'm the one going up to people and saying, hey, I'm Nora with so-and-so. Here's what I'm doing here. Here's why I'm knocking on your door bothering you. And I'm always taking that first step. And I think that because of that, that's one of the reasons people have been a little more receptive is it feels like that extended hand, so to speak, of I want to show you what this is like. I understand you might not have seen it before, but getting to have that visualization, I think it's helped make it feel less distant for a lot of folks. And because of that, they're a little more able to take that first step of, okay, I want to understand what, what this is all about, what your life is all about. Mm -hmm.